Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to my Waffle Square, where I obsess about things and you get to benefit from it. Well, in this video, we're going to be combining my love for filming my kids' sports with my love for metal fabrication by making this chain link fence access door. So it's made out of quarter inch flat bar all the way around, welded on the corners. They're sandwiched together. So there's these two pieces you see here, two pieces on the other side of the fence, all bolted together. We have two hinges here and we have a clasp for locking it up when not in use. Now, most time when I'm filming my daughter's games, I am in between the outer fence and the inner fence where the girls play because most of the fields in our tournaments are dual use, meaning they're boys and girls fields. And the girls fields are shorter in distance. And so I can get in that area in between and I can film over the top of the typically shorter little removable fence. Other times when there's just a chain link fence like this, I'm able to film through the uh, little diamonds in the fence and I can even pan over and there's only a little bit of obstruction from the fence itself. In this case, there's all this plastic kind of windbreak here that uh, just wouldn't be conducive to me filming at all. So I got the inspiration for this access door when driving across the bridge leading from Laughlin, Nevada to Bullhead City, Arizona. And I saw this little access door. It put a light over the top of my head. I sent a picture to the uh, coach of her softball team, got the okay to make this door and install it. And I wanna share the whole process with you. I got lots of video on just how I fabricated it and then how I installed it. Now the total cost of the fence itself was just $80. I got a steal by buying my metal, my flat bar locally from a company called Curtis Steel not going to Home Depot or Lowe's where the prices were ridiculously expensive. Quarter inch flat bar, in my opinion, now having built this is a little bit of overkill, but nonetheless, I only paid $60 for this deal by shopping locally. And then I paid $20 for the hinges, the clasp and the paint and nuts and bolts. So here is the process of how I built it. I first set up my lens at the field and panned it left and right to determine the required width of the opening. I then sketched out the design and dimensions on graph paper, which for you young kids was a method commonly used before the advent of SketchUp. With the materials purchased, I set about cutting the flat bar to size. Then I took a grinder to the corners to remove the burrs and make a channel for the weld puddle. I laid out each of the four frames with welding magnets and tack welded the corners.
Then I fully welded both sides of each corner. I used some old window blind slats as spacers so I could lay out and weld the hinges and clasp. I next ground and filed everything smooth. Even though I filled the screw holes of the hinges with weld, I wasn't satisfied with the look, so I filled them further with Bondo and then sanded them smooth. So we happened to have a dog run here at the house with some chain link and I measured the links themselves and they're the exact same as the high school. So this gives us an opportunity to hang the frame on the chain link and get a sense of where it's going to end up. And because I'm going to be sandwiching these pieces together like so for the frame and the door, uh, I want to put screws and bolts through them to hold it all together. So, I'm out here getting a feel for how I want that done. I want the uh, drill holes to be in the center of the flat bar. So I thought we would take advantage of these V uh, shapes in the chain link to hang the frame off of. So the four holes running on the top are gonna be right here so that when they sandwich together, they're hanging in that groove. And then I positioned it left and right so that the hinge side, which uh, is the most critical to stay uh, stable and plumb, also falls into those grooves. And then the rest, just how they lined up. So I'm gonna drill those holes, then I'm gonna line up with the uh, two frames and mark and drill those as well. And while we're here, I'm just gonna take a measurement with these calipers to see how long our screws need to be. Looks like just under an inch and a quarter, so about an inch and a half should be good. All right, cut this down, start drilling.
Just doing a test fit of all the screw holes to make sure they line up. All right, I got my little portable paint station set up. So it's a piece of conduit with uh, our ladder right near the uh, fence here in the back portion of our yard where we won't get any overspray on any vehicles. So each one of the pieces has been uh, wiped down with acetone or mineral spirits. And then also after that dried off with a tack cloth to try to get any of those little fibers off of there. And we're ready to throw down some paint. So I have a primer that is good for bare metal. And anytime I can find a tool that makes life easier and it's affordable, I usually want it. And this is no exception here. This is the Mix Quick, and it attaches to my reciprocating saw and it's got a little strap here that you strap down and hold your paint for you. And you can mix it without having to wear down your wrist. So I pre-mixed it. I was just giving you a little example there. This thing is awesome. I'll leave a link for it. All right. Oh, I have a pair of sunglasses on that are just like safety glasses that are not my favorite pair. So if I get overspray on them, I don't care. I took my watch off, you know. Kind of a nice day out here for the end of February. Uh, but if we were indoors, I'd be wearing a respirator, but we're outdoors, we've got a gentle breeze, so I'm not gonna bother. All right, that'll do for the primer. I made sure I got underneath as well, and we should be good to start color here in a little bit. All right, so just like when we tested on the dog run, I got zip ties holding it in place. And as you can see, most of the screws line up, but there's just a few that I'm gonna take this drill and I'm gonna drill through the plastic pieces. Uh, and that'll kind of keep them in place as well as just give us an easy access on the other side to put the screws through. Now I've got this little level here, making sure that we're all set. The fence is actually, what, a little bit more like this, but it's critical that the door be level for me so I can pan when I'm making uh, video shots. So, all right, let's go ahead and find the few spots we need to drill through. I'm gonna go in the field with the two frame pieces. I'm gonna set those in place, put all the screws through them, and uh, the round heads are gonna be in the field sticking out this way, so if the girls bump into them, it's not gonna hurt them. So let's do that next. Even took the time to hang and spray paint all the screw heads. So I got both uh, back frames on and all the screws poked through. And now I'm going around uh, each screw, putting down a washer and just a regular nut uh, at first to get everything uh, in place. So what I found is really helpful is you have enough space since we haven't really cinched everything together to get in behind uh, the screw and start pulling or positioning it through the hole. And once you got that, you can get a washer on and then a nut. All right, now as I start cinching these down, I'm gonna reach in from underneath with my pliers, hold that screw, just start cinching them nice and tight. Now this could be aided by a helper on the other side of the fence with a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, I don't have one of those right now, so it's just me. Now, if you have one that the drill just isn't working with, you can take a regular wrench, 
put that on first and then hold the screw like this and get it that way. Well, it's afternoon in Las Vegas, so of course it's starting to get windy. Now I have nylon nuts that I'm going to put over the top of these. And then I'll come back and tighten all those up. Alright, let's go around and tighten these up. All right, we don't need these anymore. All right, I got my welding jacket on to protect me from all the sparks. Let's cut off all these bolt heads, which will give us the ability to get in here and cut all the sections out we need. Guess I should have gloves. All right, all the rest I'm going to get from the other side where I don't have to contend with the bolts or the hinges. So once I got it all to open, I came in here and cut back the pieces of plastic and then I took a sanding disc on this uh, grinding wheel and got all the sharp edges of the fence left. So it opens and closes really good. We're all set for some games, but there's one last thing I want to do tonight. Let's put a lock on it. Coach is still here. She's watering the field down so I can run over and give her a key. And there we go. Well, there's excitement in the air. We're all set up here for the season opener here at the Liberty High School field. So I thought I'd run you really quickly through my setup here for this long distance. What, what I have found over the years works really good for me. First of all, I am running a Nikon D500 camera here. That is an APS-C camera, not a full frame. And the reason for that is when I flick to 4K and film, I'm getting an immediate 1.6 zoom. So that helps to not have to have such a high dollar lens. I run this lens right around uh, 200 millimeters so I can get really good close up shots here because I have that built in crop. Then uh, I have a microphone down here plugged into the microphone jack and that captures an incredible amount of the gameplay and the uh, fans and things like that. This one works great. Uh, I have an extra battery in this grip here so that I don't have to miss anything by f changing out batteries. And then the best thing that I have come up with to keep my eye on the player as things are moving and I'm panning the camera uh, is this little uh, aim point up here. This is not um, gun grade or rifle grade. Uh, it is below that and thus it's very affordable, but it puts a little green or red dot, whichever you select, onto uh, the perfect spot where you are focused. And the reason I have that is that when trying to look at just the screen and follow the play, there is, uh, in every single camera, there is some degree of, you know, shutter roll and it's impossible to follow tracking with just the 
um, screen. So by looking through this little glass, no magnification, little aim point sight here, I can put the dot right on the player or the ball and I can track things and I have found that I lose a lot less really quality uh, video shots by doing that. So I'll leave a link for everything I have here and you can check all those things out. So how about we get a look at the fruits of all of our labor and all of our development time here with some highlights of the game. an exciting finish. The girls have worked really hard to get to this point and the team they were playing was last year's number one team so to beat them in extra innings was very exciting. I especially loved if you look the dads in the background when the game winning hit is made and they jump up and erupt in excitement. Uh, involved dads are going to save this country. So if you enjoyed this video, will you please give it a thumbs up? Really helps the YouTube algorithm to start suggesting it to more people that like this kind of content. Now I'm gonna leave links for everything that uh, I used here, including the camera gear and all the uh, products for the build itself. Now, full disclosure, these are Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on them, end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month. It helps to justify the extra time it takes to make these videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.